The third round of the Moto Surf Games headed to the wonderful Lake Jackson in Sebring Highlands County, Florida. Around 50 racers from 12 different countries and three continents came all the way to fight for the last available points of the Moto Surf game season. The race weekend in Sebring brought intense racing in several classes, open hobby, women, youth, electric challenge, and motor skate, competition on motorized skateboards. The open class was promising an outstanding show, seeing several Top Gun racers on the entry list. Rui Merrills from the United Kingdom, Anthony Squire from the USA, Peter Vensowski from the Czech Republic, Juan Pablo Urquidi, Aritan Iboli from Mexico, John Giuliano from the USA, and many more. And all those could potentially fight for the podium. Needless to say, that most of the riders are experienced with world championship racing levels. You know, racing is, is awesome, but the people out here, it's like a family. You meet these people two, three times a year, but it's like you've known them for years. Everyone is so loving and helpful no matter what, from people, first time riders, to people like Rui or someone else that's been racing for five, six, seven years. It's just, it's so different from everything else. It's, you know, water sports as a whole, are, are really enticing, but jet surf is just different from wakeboarding, surfing, all that. It, it takes the combination of all of them, but it's just, it's more fun. Well, I've always been a big fan of, of racing. I love Formula One, and this for me is like being in a Formula One paddock. I feel all the adrenaline, it's also a lot of concentration, a lot of excitement, it's competing against others, but also yourself, pushing yourself to the limit, high speed, high rewards if you, don't, if you do it. Well, this year my focus is 100% on the World Cup. Right now I'm number two in the World Cup uh, category in stock, so hopefully I can get a podium or maybe even become the world champion for my category. This year we have a lot of competition, and here maybe Rui Merals. He's a guy from England, but he's also a World Cup racer, and he's very good. He's been doing it for much more years than I have, so he's going to be tough to beat. I, I didn't know, but I know that Sebring support the sport, so it's amazing that we have like a beautiful lake like that, and, and, and we can do the sports and, and, and have more spaces, right? But it's a little bit difficult to learn how to understand the track, and, and uh, how to make the turns, that's the thing that you have to train. There are some, there are some tracks that are more technical, other ones that are more speed. Uh, I think this one right now in Severing is uh, more speedy. Uh, I think I can do good. I've been not training that much, but uh, I think we can be good. I think my tough competition will be uh, Rui Morales, Peter. I returned from Mexico too. Uh, there's some bunch of guys that uh, is, they are tough. <laughs> I think there's a lot of expectation as uh, I came and did the first race in Keystone Heights earlier in the year. Uh, did pretty well there and managed uh, number one on the podium. So I think there's quite a bit of expectation from people and I think that's why people think I'm the, I'm the person to beat. I, I find myself quite at home on the board in the water. Um, so I just want to keep pushing. Um, the guys here keep pushing me. They're very, very fast guys, really good riders, very consistent. And it can change, change in an instant, but if you're good and you're consistent, it's it's good racing and these guys these guys are great they've um they're really sort of uh pushing people and uh, it's really good training for like the world cup and stuff like that in the heats Rui merrill started well and led the race a bad luck crash prevented him from fighting for the top spot which was taken by anthony squire the super fast racer from North Carolina scored heat number one victory and laid a solid base for a successful weekend. He was followed by Czech speedster with a big racing heart, Peter Vensovsky, while Aritan Iboli from Mexico completed the top three. In the next two heats, we saw two different winners. After a great start, consistent pace, 
and mistake-free ride, John Giuliano managed to control heat number two and cross the finish line in first place. In the last heat of the day, Juan Pablo Urquidi went super fast to score his premier heat victory in the motosurf competition. The likable Mexican racer showed strong pace, giving him a huge chance to attack the podium places in the finals. Stay tuned for more of the Motosurf Games racing action. Welcome back to Motosurf Games. Motosurf Games is a complete sports platform providing a sports base for all types of sports athletes, men, women, youth, and electric mobility enthusiasts. The championship even offers the possibility for general public to try the motorized surfboards provided by JetSurf USA. Motor Surf America on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Visit Sebring, home to the world famous Sebring International Raceway and over 100 freshwater lakes. The women's class brought truly intense racing battles between the ladies. The main battles were expected between the Mexican speedster, Alaya Flores, and American Sara Carangelo. Colombian racer Vanessa Bilo was ready to join the business as well as French Yale Metire Aranza Flores coming back after injury and Marie Pierre Blanchard who was making her debut. Sarah Carangelo. I get so nervous and I think that I'm not gonna be able to do it or I'm gonna do so bad. And then once I'm out there, I'm like, that is why I do this. Cause it's just so much fun and it's really exhilarating. It's a lot of adrenaline and you're out there with other people that are doing the same thing. So it's a lot of fun. My biggest competition is Alaya Flores. She's one of the younger girls that I believe is really, really good and is gonna be able to represent at least this side of the world in the Motor Surf World Cup in the bigger, the bigger ranks and really hold her own there. So it's really great to be out there with her and push her and have her push me. Um, so I always hope to take first, but I am never mad taking second place or third place. <laughs> I'm never mad even taking last. I just love being out here. <laughs> Alaya Flores. I love the spring. I love the weather here, the people, this place. It's amazing. The competition in my class is Aranza Flores and Sara Carangelo. They're really, really good, so that's my competition. I would love to have a first position, but everything can happen. So let's hope I can get that first position. In heat number one, it was Sara Carangelo who made the best part and controlled the session until the end. The second heat saw a different winner this time. It was again one of the favorites. Alaya Flores took the lead and ruled the second shootout. In the last heat of Saturday's program, the speed and luck was on the side of Sarah Carangelo. Now it's time for the future of motor surf discipline. The juniors class welcomed five young talents that competed with great support from their parents. This is my first time racing at Sebring, but I love the venue. It's very, uh, like the lake is um, beautiful, like it's very big. I would like to get like second place. Um, I want to do, I want to get my best times. Like I want to finish, I want to do, I want to do more than what I did last time. Faith McKay did a fantastic job on her way to improving. She competed hard with Jessica Smith, who eventually won the heat scoring.
Motorsurf Games is not just about intense racing, but mainly about ultimate sports moments. The Tube Challenge combines the skills of speed, stability, teamwork, and strategy. Stay tuned for more of the Motosurf Games racing action. Welcome back to Motosurf Games. Before we head to the finals, let's take a look where all the action took place. Everybody knows of us as the home of Sebring International Raceway, the legendary 12 Hours of Sebring. One of the benefits of bringing an event like Motosurf to the Sebring area is obviously that component, that management of our lakes and the racing. And we love that. And we love having international visitors here. We have a lot of international visitors for the, for the raceway. And then to bring that down to the water, it's just been a natural connection for us. And Jet Surf, what are all these racers riding? I'm Anthony Squire. I race for Jet Surf USA. Um, so this is the Jet Surf. Um, the main thing, most important part, is the throttle. This is your throttle with the key. You put the key in the top of the throttle. This is connected to the motor inside of the board, and that's what turns it on, and that's what gives you the gas when you're out on track. So the key also acts as a kill switch, so if you fall off the board and your hand comes off the throttle, it shuts the board down so it doesn't run away from you. So these are the foot straps. So once you stand up, you're gonna slide your feet in and you can buckle them down and tighten it on your feet so you're more stable. So on the bottom of the board, you have three fins. You have a main fin and two side fins that help you stay stable and going straight and carving. So to start, you're gonna hold the throttle with both handles and once you get up to speed and you're flat, you're not leaned back, you're gonna slide your feet in and stand up. In the hobby class, it was a very international battle from the beginning. The class was joined by 19 racers, but only 12 could make it to the finals. Standings after heats were very close on points, so the final offered a unique chance to seal victory. Matthew Glover did a fantastic job taking his first ever final victory and made it to the top step overall. Yuval Arush from Israel showed great speed and took second spot while Kuwaiti Mabarak Alfadil made it to the last podium step. You know, it feels amazing. I worked really hard before coming here and it really paid off. I'm excited. Uh, I feel like anybody can get up and ride on a moto surf. If you want to race, go in between the buoys, it's going to take a lot of practice, a lot of hard work. I practiced a lot before this weekend. The Electric Challenge is a brand new category to the world of motorized surfing race movement. The race format is slightly different. Riders compete in head-to-head -head battles where the two best riders make it to the very end. This time, it was Anthony Squire and Czech Republic's Matej Surkos. Both riders had mistake-free rides, but Matej Surkos was building a small margin over Anthony from the first lap. Little by little, 10 by tens of a second, Matej Surkos opened a comfortable lead margin and defended against super fast Anthony Squire to become the overall electric challenge winner. Matej built up on his pace from last year's Sebring race and scored second consecutive victory on the beautiful water of Lake Jackson. They have zero local emissions. So that's, that's great to ride it here in the United States. I'm really glad that I can be here. Thank you to all the organizers and, and riders. It was an amazing weekend here in Seabring. Another electric power discipline on the floor. It's motor skate time. Around the Seabrings Park and Civic Center on a motorized skateboard, all in speed about 25 miles per hour. 
Why not meet Motoscape? Some of the top motor surf racers are very good on asphalt. Rui Merrills, Anthony Squire, Ariton Iboli, Jesse Stewart, what a battle on four wheels. It was a great challenge and great battle until the last moment. Rui Merrill showed really brave ride that eventually secured a winning position. Anthony Squire extended his collection of trophies, making second, and Matthew Glover made it to the motoskate podium in third. Stay tuned for more of the Motosurf Games racing action. Welcome back to Motosurf Games. Motosurf America on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Visit Sebring home to the world-famous Sebring International Raceway and over 100 freshwater lakes. And it's time for the finals. The women's class expected super fierce challenge between Alea Flores and Sarah Carangelo. Seeing the possibility for the overall victory, she didn't give up at any moment of the race. And she made it. Alea Flores won the finals and scored the overall victory. Sarah Carangelo took second and Vanessa Bilo defended the third by a single point. Jessica Smith or Faith McKay? That was a question of the junior finals. Jessica Smith and Faith McKay took the lead and it was just a penalty of a missed buoy which determined the winning of Jessica Smith. Faith McKay finished second, and newcomer John Anderson concluded his first weekend in third. class is on. The open class is about to hit the water. The green flag goes down and the race is underway. Juan Pablo Urquidi starts well but Anthony Squire strikes into the lead. Czech Republic's Peter Vansovsky stays third and chases down the leading duo. A super tight battle in the front shows the level of racing in this class. Anthony Squire avoided any mistakes and found a comfortable pace in front of Urukidi and Vansovsky, which he managed to hold until the end. Rui Meros was super fast but unfortunate. In the finals, he experienced a crash which put him down in the ninth.
And here goes the winner. Anthony Squire crosses the checkered flag on well-deserved first place. John Giuliano, winner of heat number two, finished fourth, and Inter MX teams Artan Iboli from Mexico concluded the weekend in Sebring in fifth place. Anthony Squire made it. He managed to control the race and top the open class racing weekend. Juan Pablo Urquidi defended second place in the finals, which secured third position in the overall standings. Peter Vensovsky's third meant second position eventually. It was tough, but I, I had a lead. Juan Pablo and I were at the beginning. We actually made a little contact in the first turn, but I was able to hold first, and we got around. We took the Joker buoy together. He stayed behind me. I was in front, and we just, we just kept going, and we made the eight laps and got to keep it.